You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. You're listening to episode 280 of the Soul Forge Podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. It's an exciting episode this week because we are talking about my latest micro-obsession. What? What's that you say? What's a micro-obsession? Well, for those who have been longtime listeners or friends of mine or whatever, uh, you know that uh, randomly I get into obsessions. Micro-obsessions, major obsessions, that kind of thing. Uh, if you've been listening to me podcast since 2014 when I started the uh, Rusted Robot podcast, I'm sure you've detected quite a few of those micro-obsessions. Uh, Richard from Australia has been a long-time listener, and I'm sure he's uh, experienced quite a few of those. Uh, of course, Dan and Paul, my co-hosts on the Epsilon 3 and the Cosmic Pizza podcasts, uh, they will tell you all about my micro-obsessions as well. Uh, the latest obsession that I had before this one, I'm assuming, is my prepping obsession, where in the fall of 2021, I decided that uh, the end of the world was coming, so I better buy some gear. And so I ended up getting a few different things, like thermal blankets and... What was the other thing I got? I got a portable heater, so if the power grid goes out, I won't freeze to death. And a sleeping bag and a bunch of other things, which I can't remember. I still got a bunch of that stuff in my Amazon wish list, but uh, that obsession has faded out. Although, you know, I'm still concerned that, uh, especially with Russia and stuff and and the war and who knows what's going to happen global warming, climate change, floods, whatever. I want to be prepared, but that's taken a back seat to my latest obsession, which, as you can tell probably from the title of this episode, is Hot Wheels for some odd reason. I don't know how this little mini micro-obsession started. It's only been a few weeks in the making, and yet here it is. I guess I started watching Hot Wheel collectors on YouTube, I think that's how it started. I'm not even 100% sure, to be honest with you. But somehow, it started. And now, it's the beginning of it. I'm not in the full swing of things. I don't know how deep I'm going to get into this rabbit hole. Uh, If you've been a long-time listener and followed me before, probably it'll last a few weeks to a few months. And then I'll uh, stop obsessing and then there'll be something else that catches my attention and I'll get obsessed with that. Who knows? Who could say? This this could be a lifelong thing. It might just be fleeting. I don't know. One thing I do know is that when I was very young, and uh, it was just me and brother Curtis, we'd have a lot of Hot Wheels, and I would make him smash his cars with rocks, because that way it looks like they were in an accident, and we could play that way. And of course, we wouldn't smash up my cars, because mine had to be in good shape. So, because he was uh, just over four years younger than me, I could manipulate him pretty well, and I got to keep the good cars, and he got the crappy ones. Uh, And then, years later, younger brother Robin was born, and we had more and more Hot Wheels probably my early teenage years, uh, I was obsessed with collecting beer bottle caps for some reason. And I had thousands of them. Neighborhood kids would give them to me. uh, Adults would give them to me. I had a huge box that uh, somebody in the apartment building had given me. And it was so heavy, I couldn't even carry it. I had to push it down the hall. But anyway, we would spend hours, the three brothers, just building cities and towns 
out of beer bottle caps, and then we would drive our Hot Wheels through them. And I, I can't remember the details of what we would do, but we uh, we had the best cars, and we would pick which cars we would get, and we'd always try to get our favorites. And the better cars we had, the richer we were in the town. Some of us were the mayor, some of us were poor people on the outskirts of town. And we would just lay on the floor of the apartment building, build towns and cities and complexes out of beer bottle caps and popsicle sticks and you name it anything that we had we would make the towns out of and then we would just drive around and then it would always devolve into smash up derbies and uh fighting probably so we were always playing with hot wheels if we weren't playing with ninja turtles so that's a big part of our childhood buying hot wheels smashing hot wheels just collecting stuff for whatever reason kids collect and they were cheap. That's probably why we had so many of them, because it could it was affordable, I guess, which kind of makes sense. And they're still affordable to, to this day, although they have been going up in price a little bit. The dollar store here recently increased their price from $1.25 to $2, although Walmart here in uh, my town is still $1.69. Across the river in the United States, they're about $1.18 American, so... Uh, two bucks or less, not too bad for the regular cars. So let's um, let's dive deep into how this micro obsession began. But first, let's play a promo for another podcast right here on the ESO Network. You know what? Now is a good time for it's time for a promo for the Cosmic Pizza Podcast. The Cosmic Pizza Podcast, you say? Hmm. That sounds delicious. What is that? It's a delicious slice of life. In every episode? In every episode. Where we talk about conspiracy theories. Cartoons of our childhood. Star Trek quizzes. Movies that we've liked. Pod racing. General pop culture. Fantasy recasts. But what we don't talk about is pizzas. Right here on the ESO Network. And wasn't that a lovely promo? Hope you go check them out. Listen to all their episodes. All right, so I I was thinking about this this episode here that I'm... uh, recording right this moment that you're listening to sometime in the future and I was looking around my collectibles room which is also my podcast room and my Etsy shipping station room Uh, but uh, whatever this room is it's got a bunch of crap in it all kinds of things and stuff and I've been emptying my totes and I've been finding things and wouldn't you just know it I've got a set of six Star Trek Hot Wheels in the package from probably six or eight years ago And I'm looking at them right now, and they're on the wall, and I've just tacked them up to the wall. Beside it is, from last year, Hot Wheels released the Thunder Tank from the original Thundercats cartoon. And these are oversized cards. And so these were premium packaging, I guess, because they weren't just the regular $1 or $2. These were probably like $4.99 or something. So I've got... Six Star Trek Hot Wheels and one Thundercats Hot Wheel, which is pretty cool. So I've actually been collecting for a while and just not realizing it because I collect everything at one time or another. So I've got those things. I've got some Star Trek ones uh, that aren't the premium kinds, just that were released in the, the main line. And it's a couple of the ships from the movies that came out in 2009 and 2000 and. 13, I believe. I can't remember the exact dates, but uh, I've got a few of those. And for a while, I've actually been collecting El Caminos, Batmobiles, and Volkswagens. So I've just had a few here and there randomly. Some are in the package and some aren't. The reason for that is because, well, who doesn't love Batman? So whenever I saw a Batmobile, I'd have to pick it up. For a number of years, I had an old Beetle that I was going to restore before I sold it because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, So I've got a bunch of Volkswagen Beetles. Uh, Some are in the package and some are loose. For a long time, I really, 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 really wanted an El Camino for some reason. Maybe because when I was a teenager, I built a, a model kit out of an El Camino and I thought it was neat because it was like a car and a truck all in one. So I've got uh, three or four of the El Caminos. So I put those on a little shelf that I picked up this past summer at a yard sale. And then I was emptying some more totes. 
and I found a few other things. I've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Van that Hot Wheels released maybe two or three years ago. And last year they released a land speeder from Star Wars. So I've got that on my wall. And just looking, I've got a few other things. I've, I've got a, uh, I think it's like a, a Chevette because my first car was a Chevy Citation, which was just slightly bigger than the Chevy Chevette. And since I couldn't find a Citation, I picked up the Chevette uh, Hot Wheel and have that on my shelf. Maybe 20 or 30 years ago, I mailed away for a car from uh, Frosted Flakes. And I, it was probably one of those things where if you had so many UPC codes, you'd send that in and then you'd get a car. So I was just looking at that before the recording started. And it's a Ferrari from Corgi, not from Hot Wheels. It's uh, white with a tiger stripe down the middle. And I've been trying to look it up online to find out the value for it. And I can't find it anywhere. And I'm sure it was a, a mail away exclusive. It's been uh, wrapped up in a paper towel in my collectible totes for probably 20 or 30 years. Uh, so now it's out on my shelf and it's in pristine shape because of course it is because it's been put away for all those years. So I've got it there. And it's pretty neat. I can't find anything out about it. It's just a Ferrari from Corgi, and it was a mail-away Frosted Flakes. So if any of you listeners out there know anything about it, value-wise, or when it was released, or anything, soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. I would love to hear any information you have about that. Also on my shelf is a Dukes of Hazard car, and that's in pristine shape because that was also wrapped up in a paper towel. And uh, I've got a DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. And that's about it. So looking around, I've got maybe 35 or 40 different uh, little cars and stuff. I've been watching these videos and learning lots and lots more. Oh, and another thing I wanted to bring up. When, when uh, we were kids, we didn't call them Hot Wheels. We called them Dinky Cars. And I don't know where that name ever came from. I, I did watch a video not too long ago. And I guess Dinky was a, a brand in the UK or something. But I guess we must have got that name from our mother because uh, she she was always talking about our dinky toys and how she was tripping over them and stuff. So dinky cars, that's what I've always called them. But they're not dinky cars. They're mainly Hot Wheels. And so here's just a brief history. They came out in 1968 and the original 16 are called the Sweet 16. And they were made by Mattel by a guy named Elliot Handler. And his wife actually created the Barbie doll. So these people were married, the Handlers. Uh, they made the number one boy and girl toys of the 50s, 60s, and 70s and whatever. So that's pretty neat. And so from about 1968 to, I think, 77, uh, the cars came with a red pinstripe on the wheels. So that's called the Redline series, and those are highly valuable if you can find them. Uh, and then, let me see, just pull this down here. Let's see. Uh, 77 to 88 was the Black Walls era, and, and then from 1989 to 94 was the Collector Number era. 95 to 99 was the treasure hunt era and that's what I've been learning about right now that's when they started the treasure hunts but now it's a huge thing and according to all these YouTube videos that I've been watching people are going crazy one video had uh, like a half a million dollar collection because one of the most valuable Hot Wheels of all time is pink van with surfboards hanging out of the back and I guess they're so rare that this thing was worth like 10 grand or something I can't I can't remember what it, the guy said but uh yeah there's there's so many and then of course there's the mint on card collector and then there's the loose collectors and a lot of people buy two one to take out and play with or look at and one to keep in the package eh, you know I, I've done that with my Star Trek action figures and stuff so I totally get it right now what I've been learning about is the treasure hunt and the super treasure hunts. They're rare. They're hard to find. What a, what a car is called, it's called casting. So if you got a Ferrari or a Ford or it doesn't matter what it is, that particular car, 
truck, Jeep, whatever, is called a casting. And then the regular ones that you can find all over the store are called main lines. So main line figures, or not figures, why did I say figures? Main line car castings, main line castings, that's what I'm trying to say, are just the regular 99 cent cars or $2 or whatever they are. And then the treasure hunt, you can find that because somewhere on the car, it'll have a, a circle with a flame in it. So the Circle Flame logo means it's a treasure hunt. And then if it's a super treasure hunt, somewhere on the car, it'll say TH. And usually the super treasure hunts have what's called Spectra Flame paint. So it's kind of metallic. So if you have two cars, they could be the same exact casting. Uh, one's the regular main line, and then the other one with the fancy paint is a super treasure hunt and it's got the uh, the little TH logo on it. They can be worth between 50 and 100 dollars just by themselves right away. And so I've been going to different stores looking to see if I can find any. And of course I can't because I'm so late to the party that uh, I don't know when the various stores get their shipments in and when it's stocked because there are people around that that's what they do. They go from store to store because they know the either the employees or they know the shipping schedule or whatever and they tear through the boxes and they look for all the cool treasure hunt stuff and whether they sell it or collect it or trade it, I don't have any idea. I'm so new to this what they're calling a hobby so the Hot Wheels hobby. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, basically, I've just been collecting cars that I like. So basically, Batmobiles, El Caminos, Volkswagens, and various pop culture things like the TMNT van, the Star Wars thing, and the Star Trek stuff. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not uh, certainly going to buy uh, cars from the 70s and 80s that are hundreds of dollars because... I've seen all that stuff on these YouTube videos that I've been watching. And there's a freaking buttload of YouTube videos and channels all about this stuff. And so now it's in my feed. And I don't know how many people... I haven't subscribed to any of them. I don't need to because they just keep coming up in my uh, recommended videos. So yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot of stuff to know, a lot of stuff to learn. Uh, there's all kinds of people collecting for various reasons, whether it's for nostalgia or uh, investment purposes, I guess. I, I don't really know. Um, am I going to keep at it? Uh, probably. Just nothing outrageous. I'm not going to go buy every single car that there is because that's ridiculous. But uh, I'm just going to when I go to the store, go to the Hot Wheels section, see if I can find a treasure hunt or a super treasure hunt or something pop culture that I like, or whatever, just anything that catches my eye, which isn't really unusual and nothing I haven't done before, but I guess it'll be more intentional because I'm actually looking for specific things now. And that's, that's basically it. That's my latest micro obsession. How it started, I don't know. What will the next micro obsession be? Who could say? But there it is. So what I would like to know from you listeners out there in podcast land is what do you collect? Do you have micro obsessions? I would love to hear your stories. Send an email, soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Also remember, if uh, you're looking for pop culture items, you can go to my Etsy shop, Rusted Robot Toys. But mostly, just share the link of the podcast with your friends and family and everywhere so that uh, we can get more listeners like you and we can grow a bigger community and I can drone on and on and on uh, about this kind of stuff and other things in the future. So that's it. That's uh, all I know for this week. Hope you enjoyed this episode and a look at my latest micro obsession. So I hope you take care of yourselves and each other. And remember, the more you research, the crazier you sound to ignorant people. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links, and don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. There's something new in Hot Wheels. The Hot Wheels Sizzlers are here. 
Underneath his gleaming hood is a built-in motor. Hot wheels with power built right inside. Recharge the Sizzler's power cell with the juice machine. And they'll run on your Hot Wheels track for lap after lap. The Sizzlers are here. Hot Wheels with a motor built right inside. Buy any one of six cars. The Juice Machine or the new California 8 race set. With two Sizzlers. Track. Juice Machine. Dual Speed Brake. Essence. And Lap Counter. Get Sizzlers. From Mattel. The fastest Hot Wheels cars yet. Go with a win. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.